Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Recognizing and understanding the building blocks that make up a larger progression like a jazz composition or a jazz standard is really essential. It's going to help you memorize the song because you have to remember fewer bits and pieces instead of remembering all the chords. And it's also going to help you improvise over it and understand what's going on and move that knowledge to learning other songs or to move the song around in other keys. In this video, I'm going to go over three different progressions and some of the common variations on them. And that's really what makes up most of the chord progressions you're going to come across if you're trying to learn jazz compositions. This video is really trying to sum up the information that I have gathered as a jazz guitar player, having played and analyzed hundreds of jazz standards. And it's really just a look at uh, the things that I would try to figure out if I have to move a standard to another key or if I have to side read an each sheet on a gig. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes, checking out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. Most of the songs that you're playing in jazz are in fact tonal and they are in a key. So for this, I'm just going to start with having a key and that's going to be the examples that I'm going to use throughout the video. And the key that we're going to choose is just going to be C major because no matter what you play, you probably know the C major scale. Uh, so that's easy for everybody to have an overview of. We have our tonic chord here, which is a C major 7. The most important cadence in this key would be the cadence back to C major. And in jazz, that's a 2 5 1. So that means that that's a D minor, G7 to C major 7. And the D minor, so the 2 5 1, really 2 is just the degree in the scale. So first note is C, that's a 1. D is 2, and the G is the 5. So that's really how we sort of come by those Roman numerals. And we have uh, D minor, G7 to C major as the basic cadence. You're gonna probably find that most songs will end on the tonic and you'll find that cadence at the end of the song because that's the basic way to end the song. Besides the cadence, we can also make a progression that we can loop. So instead of starting with the D minor, G7 to C major, I'm not gonna start with the tonic and I'm just gonna really turn around that previous progression. So we have C major and then we get the two five and that takes us back to C major, and then we can keep on going. So this is called a turnaround. And um, usually when you have a turnaround, you actually have one more chord, because after the C major, you'll add, uh, for instance, an A minor seven. And then you have this progression. A very common uh, variation on this is to substitute the first chord with the third degree in the scale. So that would be, instead of the C major 7, it's going to be an E minor 7. And then we have this. We also need cadences to the other chords in the key. So if we take the C major scale and then look at the diatonic chords in there, then we have C major, so the tonic, the D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, A minor 7, B half diminished, a C major 7. For each of those chords, we want to have a cadence. So in jazz, they're all going to be two fives. The first thing we need to have, so of course, the, the first chord is C major, we already have a cadence for that. That's just D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. Then for the D minor 7, so the D minor 7 is a minor chord, so we want to have a minor cadence to that one. And uh, in minor, the two chord is a half diminished chord, so that's in this case, that would be the minor cadence to D minor would be E half diminished to A7 and then to D minor. And really that's the only distinction we're going to make. So E minor, again, is a minor chord, so the cadence we get is F sharp half diminished, so a minor two chord, the dominant of E minor, which is an E7, and then an E minor 7. Now F major 7. This is a major chord, so we're going to get a major cadence also. So that's a G minor 7 to C7 to F major 7. For the dominant, so G7, we have a major 2-5, it's a major chord, so A minor 7, G7, uh, D7, sorry, to G7. And then we get the A minor, so that's a minor chord, so B half diminished, E7 to A minor. And then the last one is the B half diminished. I actually don't know of any songs that has a cadence to uh, 
to the seventh degree. But if I was to add a cadence to that one, I would say this is a minor chord, and then I would make a minor cadence, so that's C sharp half diminished to F sharp seven to B half diminished. Of course, the way I've covered this right now is that I made a complete cadence for each of the degrees in the scale, for each of the diatonic chords. And you will also very often find that there's not a complete cadence, it's only gonna be a domin dominant. So we have the secondary cadence, and sometimes you also just have a secondary uh, dominant, and that's not there's no two chord involved. And those are, you'll treat them the same way, so there's not really too much of a difference. And if I just covered the entire cadence, then you'll know both chords. And you can also recognize when something is in fact a secondary dominant resolving to something in the in the scale, in the key. Now we have a basic cadence back to the root. Uh, we can make some turnarounds and keep things going like that. And of course we can also make cadences and use secondary dominance to get to pretty much any chord in the key. So the next thing I want to talk about are the progressions that are centered around using uh, subdominant minor or four minor chords. So four minor or subdominant minor is when you're borrowing the subdominant chords from the minor key. So now we're in C major, and that means that we're borrowing the subdominant chords from C minor. So in this case, that would be F minor chords, for instance. So the basic version of this is really just to have C to C7, because we want to have a secondary dominant to go to the, to the fourth degree. Then we are on the fourth degree, that's an F major chord. And then instead of going through the dominant, so through the G, to go back, we can use a four minor and then go back to the tonic. So just to play that in time, so you can hear what's going on. Probably most of you, when I play it like this, will think of the Beatles, at least that's, that's my association, uh, because they use a lot of four minor. Uh, but it's also an extremely common progression in, in jazz and in jazz standards, uh, except there are a few variations. The idea here is that most of those progressions are gonna be, if we just look at the four, four minor to tonic part, then there's gonna be some sort of subdominant chord, chord, so that could be an F major seven. Then there's gonna be some sort of four minor chord that could be an F minor six. And then back to C major. And what will happen very often is that we'll have the F major seven, and then instead of playing the F minor six, then this is pretty much the same. If you look at it in terms of notes, then uh, F, C, D, and A flat really spells out sort of a D half diminished, and maybe even something that if you put a B flat in the bass on it, then you have a B flat seven. So that means that what we call the backdoor dominant is really just a four minor chord. So you'll see this progression as well, resolving back to C. And another thing that's very common is that instead of playing the F major seven, we can use some of the other subdominant chords that we have available. And most, uh, the most common one to be to do it would be the the D minor seven. So then we have. And when we're using the B flat seven, because in jazz we're so used to two fives, then you might turn this chord into a 2-5, so then you will have a progression like D minor 7 to F minor 7, B flat 7, back to C major 7. Thinking like this, where you're taking a complete progression and then breaking it up into smaller components, is going to make it a lot easier to deal with, because you can think of different chords in groups, and you don't have to think about each and every chord and place that into a context. You have sort of a bigger words of progressions that you can put into the sentence of the whole song. And this is extremely efficient, and it's probably also necessary if you want to be able to play uh, something like a lead sheet on a gig side reading and then still get it right and still understand what extensions needs to go where and uh, how to solo over that uh, progression. If there is a chord or a progression that you think is really important that I didn't cover in this video, then leave a comment. Uh, usually there's a lot of interesting information being shared in the comments, and of course my view on what is sort of the the basic progressions that you need to be aware of when you're trying to learn standards might be different from yours, and uh, I would certainly appreciate to hear what, what your point of view is on that, if you have a standard vocabulary and if you have an idea about what you think is important that's different from mine, then there's a chance for me to learn something. Uh, and I'm sure it's also something that's interesting for whoever is watching this video, because they are of course also interested in this topic. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. 
the videos that I publish here are all on finding some solid methods and good strategies to explore all the great things about jazz guitar and improvising. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. It's because of the support that I'm getting from my patrons that I can keep on publishing videos every week and I'm very grateful for that and if you join us over on Patreon I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week, thank you for watching and until next week.